Punk Rock Karaoke, punk karaoke which is me and Steve Soto from the Adolescents, Derek O'Brien, who the general, one of the original guys in Social Distortion. Here with Eric Melvin from Bill Fex, and we are a live punk rock karaoke band where we play this old classic punk rock songs and we hand somebody the mic and they come up and sing. We give them a lyric sheet. We say, We play, you sing. So it's kind of cool being in a band without a singer. It makes things a lot less dramatic, that's for sure. Yeah. Big fan of Social D. I remember seeing them over the years many times, and that was a great time. You know, um, what are some of the bands you're covering? Uh, no Black Flag, Misfit, Social Distortion, uh, Sex Pistols. Yes, we pretty much do anything. Clash. I say Black Flag, yeah. I'll say it again, Black Flag again, yeah. and X. But we do stuff that, uh, anything pre-1983, we define as the classic era of punk rock. And we hand people a lyric sheet, and they come up and sing with us, it's pretty fun. We hang out in the background, but we wear suits and ties, we're just with a backup. But I have, I have cool. one Cool. So, you don't hear the original band today. Um, of all the original bands that you've been over the years, which one or which one do you feel still have the most demand or you get asked about the most? Tough one. Depends. Most people talk about bad religion for the most part. Yeah. What's the status of that band? Uh, they're still playing. I'm not in the band anymore, but they're still going. Okay. Cool, cool. And life for you nowadays. What is life like for you? Yeah, it's a transition period, trying to figure out what to do next musically. Doing this fun stuff with my friends, that's pretty cool. So I'm just kind of enjoying the uh, Stanley Cup victory of my Los Angeles Kings. I'm not a Rangers fan, so yeah, I wasn't too pleased. Yeah, they had a good year. Got a solid, solid goalie. Yes, I sure. yeah. But uh, you guys won because their defense tipped every single goal into their, their own net. Yeah. That's what happened. It happened a lot. And you're a great team, too. So. Yeah. yeah. No, that was a crazy second overtime. It was just the overtime, you guys were getting pummeled. Yeah. Shot after shot. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. It was a good series. Sure, sure. How do you adapt, I guess, to changes in life at your age versus, let's say, 20 or early 30s, when it's probably a little bit easier to make changes in one's life? You're still kind of adapting and, you know, going with the flow. I mean, how do you do it? Uh, I think okay. it's easier. It's easier when you get older. You kind of realize that the bad smells don't, they aren't as long as remember them, you just kind of roll with it and try not to stress out too much. And, uh, you know, get as much rest as you can. Simple things. Yeah. How do you, um, do you, you train at all? Do you exercise? No, but I need to. I need to get back in that. Uh -huh. Diet, lifestyle? Diet, nothing special. No, I try to, you know, Limit the junk food, but I like junk food, so it's kind of tough. Yeah. So no special diet. Yeah. I need to get go back on something a little more healthy. Do some exercise. Um, your relationships in life. What are your strongest relationships? Your strongest relationships. Strongest relationship probably with my daughter. It's a good one. Nice. And the experience of being a father, tell me about that. It teaches you patience, it teaches you uh, all kinds of stuff. So you kind of try to right the wrongs that you've done before with your parents. My parents did to me, and try to pass them on that to, to your kid. <clears throat> Advice you could offer to the young people out there who are struggling with, you know, Institutional systems, poor family situations, stuff like that. Hmm. Well, things can and we will and usually do get better, and 
You have to be proactive. You have to definitely have a positive attitude. That definitely helps. Because uh, I think when you're in that negative zone, you just create more havoc and uh, you attract the, the craziness. I know that from experience. Experience uh, makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Also having a clear head, too. For sure. Did you ever drink? Yeah. Yeah. I quit drinking stuff last year. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so that helps. That helps me have the perspective of, like, okay, things might not be so great right now, but it's all going to work out. And you quit doing everything last year? Like everything else? Yeah, no. No drugs, no, no alcohol, nothing like that. How do you feel now after that? I feel good. I feel a lot better. Really, yeah? Yeah, my patience is not as good as it used to be, but I want to know that. It's good. People bug me. It's <laughs> good. Um, day to day, what do you do? Uh, I play a little music, listen to a little music, watch sports on television. Read the news, watch the news, see what people have things to do somebody. How is, I guess, the society back home? People with general state of economic, I guess, health? It appears to be getting better, but still, you know, slow, slow recovery. Still not right. It's gotten a little bit better, but easily fall back the other way. Very easily, so. Cautiously optimistic. Who do you hold accountable, if anybody, for the economic, uh, I guess, mishaps, the economic, uh, you know, discrepancies? <laughs> well, it's a combination of, you know, the, your big corporations and the, the government. <laughs> and uh, just the apathy of the American people, for sure. You gotta, you know, take, take blame for what the people have put up with and not stood up to. So it's a combination of all those. But and it's been, you know, pretty slow, small, you know, downhill thing for, for decades. Of life. Yeah. Any, I guess, future forward kind of hopes, dreams, things like to accomplish? Be coming five years, two years, one year. I'm not sure, yeah. just kind of, you know, make it day to day, one day at a time, man. I don't know. Yeah. You know, just keep it, just, you know, try to not take things too seriously, not to freak out. Yeah, that's all I got from that. I don't know. So. You're a calm, wise man. I'm trying to be a calm, wise man. I was not a calm, wise man for a long time. I might have been wise, but I wasn't calm. Wow. But now you're a little calmer. A lot calmer. Yeah, a lot, a lot calmer without the pharmaceuticals. That, 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 was, bad, that was a bad thing. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's actually the last question is addiction to pharmaceuticals, it's huge, it's everywhere. It's really bad, yeah. You see it ruin a lot of people's lives. Um, what kind of, I guess, advice or reflections do you have on and why they're so widely used and, and I guess how to steer clear of them and, and prevent you know self-destruction through pharmaceuticals. Well, uh, it's just easily available. I mean, you can ask any doctor and uh, you know, stuff's over-prescribed and it's easier than, you know, you want to keep, keep the patient and send it out. Well, here, here's this, here's that. Instead of getting the root of it, and then, you know, trying other things first, perhaps. It's just easier than to write a prescription. And I think some look, some doctors just don't know any better either. You can't, can't just blame the, the pharmaceutical people, but you got to blame the doctors for being uh, dumb sometimes. Yeah. And then uh, uh, and then even you know getting off of it, it, it seems like a bigger a bigger ordeal than it really is when you, you do finally quit. It's just you know, dealing with the fear of. Of the unknown. There's really a lot to do with a lot of people are stuck on that trend. Well, hopefully people watching fear that kind of, you know, yeah. reality a little bit more and take their addictions a little more seriously. Yeah. Or, or not take them so seriously. Right. You see it as something that if you overcome, 
Your life won't be that much worse afterwards. It can, I mean, if we let it keep doing the same things, wondering why it turns out the same, keep up with the, with the uh, you know, negative aspect of your life. You gotta make positive, do something a little different, you know. But my advice, but sometimes people can, can roll with the whole, you know, grind of the party. And, Sometimes it works for me, but it didn't work for me. Well, congratulations on being Thank sober. Uh, oh, great. <laughs> Tired. Obviously, because there's no cocaine to perk you up. I never did cocaine. I didn't like it. I didn't like cocaine. Why is everyone on cocaine nowadays? I don't know. Everyone's on it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, my friends loved it. I didn't like it. I didn't get it. I didn't like it. All the better, your bank account probably benefited. Yeah. You'd easily go bankrupt. It's like gambling. Right. Chasing them high. Mm -hmm. Getting it's poor, high. getting high. Chasing the high. I didn't understand chasing the high. I know it's only in the last few seconds, a few minutes, whatever. There's no value in that. <laughs> Smart man. All right, well, uh, I wish you good set tonight. All right, thank you. I'll be seeing you in a few hours there. All right. And, uh, yeah, play a lot of social D. That's all I gotta say, play a lot of social D. I don't know if we do a lot, but, you know, some of the uh, choose that we will play. Give me 20, 20, 30 songs from social D, I'll be happy. Okay, well, then we'd be a social D. Never man. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to do that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to whatever you guys have on. Okay, man, thanks. On time. Thanks for your time. Talking to you again. Yeah. Me too. Thank you, sir.